Well, welcome to the Cut for Time podcast here at the Canton United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay and joined by Eric Stearns over Zoom this week. I'm um, just glad to be together to have this conversation and glad that you joined us. Um, just uh, today, we're going to be digging into my message from Sunday, which was about interruptions and how do we deal with interruptions and how do we deal with the fact that Jesus is willing to be interrupted? A woman breaks into a place where she should not have been and does something crazy and unexpected and, and really even uncomfortable. But yet Jesus receives her with grace. So how do we deal with interruptions? Are we more like the Pharisees? Or are we more like Jesus? And what does that teach us about our faith? So let's get into it. Sounds good. So the one thing I, I wanted to talk about. Um, so this story is super weird, right? Uh-huh. And the experience of the woman kissing and crying on Jesus's feet is super uncomfortable. Yep. How do we, as modern day Christians, how do we handle that when, when, when we read that story? And like, it's so weird. And how do we gain anything from it with, by getting over the weirdness of it? You know what I mean? And how do we tell that to non-believers? Like if they were to read this story first, they'd be like, well, this is friggin' weird. I'm out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I totally hear you. I mean, you have to understand like that the 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 world of Jesus and the world of the Bible, like the context, the the culture in which it's written, not the context, but the culture in which it's written, is a much more intimate society. Like in terms of hospitality, three things that were always done was there was always a kiss given. Like male, female does not matter. Like Simon, if if Simon was going to be a good host, he should have kissed Jesus. They should have had a kiss. That should have happened. Didn't. Did not happen. Simon should have washed Jesus' feet because the only thing that they had to protect for them their feet from the roads were a piece of leather and some string. And the roads were dusty and dirty and full of animals and like everyone shared the same road. And so there's no telling what you would have stepped in during the day. So that should have happened. And then there should have been something given either to wash the face or an oil to anoint the head. Like doing something to like freshen up is a part of hospitality. And Simon did not allow for any of those, but the but the woman did all three of them. And, you know, so there is no getting over the awkwardness of the story because it's awkward. And Jesus makes it even more awkward by calling Simon out in his own house. Like that's even that part of it's awkward. Like when you go over to the, go, go over to be a guest at someone's house, there's a level of just having to put up with whatever happens next. If the, if you have a bad host, like in our day and age, in our modern society, if you have a bad host, you just suck it up. And then on the drive home, you look at your wife and say, huh, well, that was weird. I don't want to go back over there. No, Jesus right. called it out. Like Jesus made Simon sit in it. Like, you know, he told the he told the parable, then and then applied the parable exactly right after. You know, the parable of two people owing money to a money lender, neither of them can pay it. They both get, you know, forgiven, and the one that's forgiven more loves greater. And Simon has to, I mean, and then Jesus does what I love when Jesus does. He asks a, a very open-ended question at the end of it and says, okay, who would have loved more? And makes Simon say it. The one that was forgiven more. Like, the, clearly this woman, like, we don't know what the sin is, but this woman has a, a great amount of sin in her life that she has just been forgiven. And so she's clearly going to love more. Than Simon mm -hmm. does, and 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 clearly shows that. So as to what we get out of that story, if we're able to get over the awkwardness of which I don't think we are able to get over the awkwardness, I think what we take from this story is just the fact of first of all Jesus being willing to forgive sins. Like that is an amazing part of this story that we can so often overlook. Like this is about the forgiveness of sins, and this is about the work that Jesus is doing that Jesus should not have been doing. Like mm -hmm. that's not his job. Like there's a reason why they mumble to each other at the end of the story and say, who is this guy thinking that he can forgive sins? Are you kidding me? There's a sure. reason why they're mumbling about that because Jesus should not have done that. So our application is one that Jesus is able to forgive sins 
And that's good news because who are we if not sinners? We all have sin in our lives. And Jesus is the one that forgives those sins. And then just the second application is, is that if we're not living right, Jesus is going to call us on it. Jesus is going to call us to repentance um, and, to, and to a bigger life. Uh, those are two applications. And then the third one is just, you know, around like Jesus' willingness to, to be with everybody. Like, because we talked about that so much in, uh, in, in last week's sermon, I didn't want to go there on Sunday. Cause it, I mean, it was, it's, these stories can be very similar of mm -hmm. Jesus just eating, eating meals with all the wrong people. And here he's eating, he's eating meals with the wrong people because he's starting to gain this reputation as the guy that's going to be with the sinners always, with the outcasts, with the downtrodden. And if you see someone like that start to like venture over to the other guys, you're going to be just as put off as the Pharisees would have been earlier. Like Jesus can't just dwell with one, with one segment of, of, of humanity. Jesus is the savior of all people. Mm -hmm. And so seeing Jesus in these different contexts is so important because it just gives hope for everybody. Right. But the story is inherently weird. And the, the, the setting is, I mean, it is just a very awkward story. It's awkward for everybody involved. Like, I think of like the 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 normal person at the table with Simon, like the other Pharisees. Like we we hear so little. We hear them grumble at the end, but like there, it's so it has to have been so awkward because this is just mm -hmm. such a breach of social protocol. And like even in our day and age, if something weird happens, like there's just this anxiety that we just sit mm -hmm. there and wait for like okay. Who's going to call it out? Who's going to, you know, who's going to, who's going to push the pin into this that blows the whole thing up? And that was Jesus. Like that, that was literally Jesus that said, Hey, Simon, can I talk to you? And then he tells right. the story, you know, like it's just, it, it is just crazy. It's like when, it's like when Marshall and Lily are having their wine tasting party. Nice. And the the one the other teacher that's there is saying that she's they're making fun of babies and yep. that he, Marshall and Lily aren't gonna have babies. And then she yep. goes, I'm three months pregnant. And she goes, and Marshall goes, It's only awkward if we make it awkward. <laughs> 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 In only the way Marshall can say it. Yes. Very similar to that. Absolutely. Now that was awkward. That that was awkward. awkward. <laughs> I mean, Marshall's not Jesus, that. but <laughs> right, yeah. Marshall's not Jesus, but there are definitely parallels to mm -hmm. you know, just real yeah. life. Yep. Oh, absolutely. This is a very earthy story, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because, yeah, like, okay, cleaning with the hair thing. Mm -hmm. Like, that had to be super weird. Yeah. I suppose it's a it's a show of, of um, just servitude towards Jesus. Yeah, I mean it. Yep. It's, it's weird. It's a vulnerability, and it's an it's an emptying of oneself. I mean, mm -hmm. like she is doing everything that she can with all that she has. Right. You know, she has she has this all she has this alabaster box or this alabaster jar, which in reading the, some of the commentaries this week pointed out the fact that that would have been one of her most prized possessions. And sure. she's willing to give it to Jesus. She's willing to, to use that resource to anoint Jesus' feet. Like, and then she's, you know, just she's, she's using what she has because clearly no one at the table is going to help her. Like, she is not where she's supposed to be. She's not where she's welcome to be. And she's doing something that's freaking everybody out. Mm -hmm. No one's going to help her. So what other option does she have other than to wipe the hair, wipe the feet with her hair? Mm -hmm. And even that, even having her hair down as an unmarried woman, like that, even that is a part of emptying herself too, because that was just not done. Like when you were in public as a single unmarried, um, you know, let alone being a scandalous woman, but like you just didn't have your hair down. That was not a thing. Like your hair was up out of respect. Your hair was up because it's more looking kept than if you have your mm -hmm. hair down. There's a reason why letting our hair down is a phrase that we say to this day. It's because of cultures and societies where letting your hair down was, you know, just, uh, it was a, a, a less formal thing, a more private thing, a, a thing that was reserved only for a few people to see. 
Um, and so this is just this complete emptying of herself at the feet of Jesus. And yes, it did freak people out, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so she was, she was not invited to this party. No, 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 no. This would not, this would have been, um, the way that I put it in Bible study on Sunday is this would have been a very fancy stag. Because it would have been just male people invited to it. It's a fair. It's a Pharisee thing. It's a. Mm. It's a Pharisee event. So it would have been just males in the room. And so she was very much where she was not wanted, and very much where she was not welcome. But she also just didn't care because she was going to get to Jesus. Like she had obviously heard something of Jesus' healing nature. She had obviously heard that he is a person that can help her because she's at the very end of herself. You know, but and so she is bound and determined to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that we've talked about this in the past a little bit about um, how yours and my story are very boring. Mm -hmm. You know, and when Jesus tells the parable of five hundred coins versus fifty coins, and you know, forgiving both sins, right? Like, I, I get, like, I that resonated well with me. Like, mm. you know, it's hard sometimes because. Because we're, you know, we've been raised in this and this is all we've ever known. Right. Sometimes it's easy for us to grow um, numb. Sure. To to our faith a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we tend to maybe not love as strongly as we should mm. because it's just, that's just what you do. And so you kind of become complacent, maybe. Sure. Yeah. You know, I don't know. What do you think? I want to kind of yes and what you just said, um, because... I do think that it is easy for us because we had a, this is all we've known. Um, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean less to us, though. Like, our faith is still, I mean, obviously, we're, we're, we're here. We're giving of our time to record this podcast. And we're, I mean, I'm a pastor, and you're also very, very involved in the life of the church. Like, being, being active in our faith and growing in our faith is obviously very, very important to both of us. It's still, Jesus still means as much to us, even if it is more of a fact of what Jesus has saved us from rather than what Jesus has pulled us out of. Because mm -hmm. yeah. like my faith is still just mean everything to me. Like, I mean, just, I mean, I mean, obviously I'm a pastor, but like, even if I wasn't like, even in those, in those years before I was serving a church, like, you know, faith was always important to me. Like I was always the nerdy kid that was willing to just go and be and do stuff at the church. And like, if, you know, I, I would, after school, if I had time, I'd go down and bug the pastor just because I, I didn't have anything else to do. But yeah, I mean, even if I wasn't serving in the church, faith would still be important to me. Like when I was trying to decide what to do with my life, like I was either going to do this or teach music. And even then I was like, well, how can I still honor God in that? Like that was still a part of the conversation. And I also still find ways to mess up and, you know, still feel like my debt is, you know, 500 denarii rather than 50. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Probably pretty aware when we screw up, maybe more self-aware when we screw up. Hopefully. Because we know what the rules are, or we have a better idea what the rules are. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But. Hopefully more self-aware. Mm-hmm. Yep. What else would you like to talk about regarding the parable? The story that Jesus tells is that there are these two these, these two people that owe debts. I mean, one of them is a 50 denarii de debt, and one of them is a 500 denarii debt. Um, and, and doing some research on that this week, it would be the difference between a two-month debt or a 25-month debt. Um, is basically like the, the range in which Jesus is talking about. Like they are very paybackable debts. One of them is going to take a little bit longer than the other, but they're still, they're manageable because there mm -hmm. are other parables that Jesus tells where the debt is just like, he's pulling numbers that have absolutely no bearing in reality, you know? And yet, I mean, Jesus can forgive that big too, but yet it's interesting to me that the debts were within, they were within striking distance. Um, in this parable in a way that they, they, they aren't in other places. Sure. And so, you know, it, it's just interesting that Jesus tells a more pointed and realistic story um, to the Pharisee, whereas in a more generalized teaching session, um, Jesus would give more exaggerated numbers or tell, tell an even more. Um, and I think that there's something to that. I think that there, I think that there is some, 
you know, just kind of further proving Jesus' difference from the Pharisees and, and Jesus' disappointment in the Pharisees as well. Because then after the parable, Jesus asks this question and then makes Simon sit in it and then goes on to further teach and further just directly apply and say, look, this woman is showing this much love. You showed mm -hmm. this much love. Like you invited me for reasons that pass understanding. Um, but and then and then you showed me no hospitality. This woman who you did not invite and don't think is worthy and don't think is is worth anything, really, showed me this much love, you know, mm -hmm. and get get right, basically, is what he is what he says to Simon is basically just do better, you know. In the face of the Pharisees, he pronounces forgiveness over her. That had to make him mad, huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Pastor Stephanie Schneider and I are doing the sermon series together. Uh, Pastor Steph uh, serves two Baptist churches in upstate New York. And we were talking on Monday after we'd both preached on this text. Um, and she's just like, I wish I would have thought of this yesterday, but it's such a power move that Jesus pulls by pronouncing forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And really taking, you know, taking a spot at a table that should not have been his and then, you know, using that as a way of of staking his claim and claiming his authority and making the and giving the Pharisees something to think about mm -hmm. when it comes to who he is. At this point in Jesus's um, in Jesus's ministry, would he have already staked those claims that the Pharisees would have known he was doing things? That were not or were out of his wheelhouse as a rabbi. Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah, um, this is still fairly early in Jesus' ministry. Sure. Um, but I was just looking at the Gospel of Luke, and uh, one of the things that comes up in Luke's Gospel before this story is Jesus plucking grain on the Sabbath and like reinterpreting what the Sabbath is for and how that works, and and really just kind of getting after um, the Pharisees about being so Pharisaical. Um, about the mm -hmm. Sabbath, but Jesus would have definitely been raising some issues by this point. Yeah. They may not... why, would, why would they have invited him to the party just to crap on him, essentially? Right. We talked a little bit about that on Sunday during the sermon of, you know, just the idea of these differing ideas of why. And but I do think that there's some validity to the Pharisee invited Jesus to the table in order to bait him into saying something that they could say, okay, now we've got this on you. We can go charge you because you're being, you know, so you about this. He had to be super annoying, didn't he? <laughs> to I certain mean, people. To certain people, he just had to... <laughs> really grind their gears, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But Jesus was no less willing to go. I mean, even knowing that he was annoying them and even knowing that... I mean, even knowing that it wasn't going to go well, Jesus mm -hmm. was still willing to go. Exactly. I don't know about you, but I don't prefer to go where I'm not wanted. And so I don't know if I would have gone. Even, yeah. if, even invited, I don't know if I would have gone. Yep. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed how you finished that. You finished the sermon. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, I think that there, there, there has to be some thought around... Like, how do we respond to interruptions from people that we think are not worthy of our time or are, you know, and, and just, you know, kind of how the Pharisees were in the story. Like, they did not want this woman here. They were mad at Jesus for not doing anything about it. They were waiting for Jesus to just, you know, throw her out. And they were waiting for Simon, the host of the party, to do something about it and say, hey, like, I wrote the guest list for this party and you're not on it. So, you know, you got to go. But Simon didn't. Simon was never given that opportunity. Jesus shut that down real fast. Um, right. And yet, I think that there is a temptation in our own lives to say, "Well, they're just that, so I don't really need to take that very seriously." Or they're just, you know, or you know, they're not whatever. And just, you know, I think that there is a big gap in there for us to say, "Okay." When we get interrupted with something, and especially when we get interrupted by something that we think is lower on our priority list, you know, how do we respond to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also just want to, you know, reiterate, um, you know, just the fact that Jesus is willing to be interrupted. Like, yep. Jesus, you know, I don't know what Jesus' intentions for the evening were, 
we will never know that. You know, we, we know that this was not Simon's intentions for the evening. And I, I don't even think they were Jesus' intentions for the evening. Like Jesus could have been on his way to teach something that we'll just never know about. Mm -hmm. Yet he was willing to engage with this interruption, really willing to see this woman. The Jesus interruptions are for us because who are we to be on that level to interrupt Jesus? Um, you know, and there are times, I mean, at least in my own life, there are times when I'm tempted to not bring something up or to, you know, try and figure it out by myself without, you know, without God's help. And All just, the time. Oh, yeah. And then you just get yourself in such a mess where you're just like, okay, <laughs> um, Jesus, I have done this and it, this is how it resulted. And I need you to either fix it or fix me or you know, just do something in that situation. And more often than not, it's fix me is the problem. Yep. So it's just important to know that Jesus is cool with our, with our interruptions too. So what's yeah. next week? Yeah. So next week we have Jesus dining with more Pharisees. Um, and we have Jesus talking about seating arrangements. Um, the side of the Pharisees, I mean, it, it kind of echoes back to me um, to Matthew 6, where Jesus is talking in the Sermon on the Mount about, you know, the, the, the hypocrites like to pray in the, in the square and, and draw all this attention to themselves. Um, that same thing is happening at suppers. The same thing is happening at dinners, um, where like, especially in a, in a world that is so hierarchical, where people are expected to have places of honor. The dining scenes in the Bible, people would have been shifting seats all the time when someone more important shows up. And so mm -hmm. Jesus looks around a gathering where he is at among some Pharisees and says, we can be doing better than this. And then teaches them in a parable around like, when you go somewhere, sit at a lower spot because it's one thing to sit at a higher spot and then be asked to like move down. It's another thing to sit in a lower spot and be asked to move up. So don't assume mm -hmm. that you're so don't assume that you're the most important person in the room and be willing to, you know, enter into these other spots to make room for more people, you know, to, to not think of life as so it's such a transactional thing, um, but to really even just shift their entire thinking around who's going to be at the table with them. And like, if you are the most important person, how do you invite those that are that are that are less important? So it's all about expanding the table and making room at the table um, for others. Humbling yourself. Yep. Right. Yep. That sounds great. Yeah, should be good. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's Comfort Time podcast. Join us again next week in person or online at 10 a.m. on Sunday. And then back here for the podcast next week. Thanks for listening to our Cut for Time conversation. Join us for worship in person or on Facebook Live Sundays at 10 o'clock Central Time. And now go in peace and serve the Lord.